Hey guys, um, today is the first um, one on um, the new Hail Caesar rules, which is not very different than the old Hail Caesar. So if you're at the old Hail Caesars, there's not much difference. They just clean up some stuff. But today um, we're going to cover is building your um, units, your army, and uh, some basic movement. Um, Building armies is basically up to you, depending on if you're doing a historical battle or are you doing a battle that uh, that you come up with yourself. Um, and you gotta organize your forces within that army. So uh, this is part of my um, part of, uh, World of Roses army. Um, so you're going to have your army, and the army's going to be breaking down into divisions. Um, each division is going to be commanded by a lord or a leader leader figure so what i got here is i got four units of infantry with a mounted uh, uh leader the leader doesn't have to be mounted it can be on foot depending how you want to model but usually i do my leaders on, on mounted it makes them stand out you know who they are uh the unit is made up of a unit crossbow a unit of bill uh, bill and bow a unit of men of arms and a unit of knights uh foot knights so what do you the, thing is that you want to um, um, build your divisions to make it e too easy. If you make them too large, they become too bulky, it becomes really hard to manage them all, which is kind of historical because a leader has a few units. If he gets too many, it's hard for him to control them all because there is no radio communication. You, you got to send someone out to, or you have to ride across the battle to tell you to do something. So once you get too big, it becomes too unwieldy. So usually a four unit is good for a leader. Um, you can add, um, you can make them bigger if you want to, depending on the size. Especially if you're doing historical battles, so if a leader has a lot of troops, you can have him, or you can break that up. You can have a sub leader control some troops with him controlling some troops too. So, uh, but usually a four stand is good. Um, you can hit, add artillery to them if you want to. Uh, artillery won't really hurt them that bad. Uh, usually they stay behind anyway. Um, the control, um, I said leaders can be mounted or on foot. Um, I usually mount my leaders on circular stands. Have them mounted because they stand out more. Um, other ways, um, you can do, like, especially if really important figures, like this is a uh, army general, this uh, Richard the third so I put him on a big with his knights so he really stands out knowing that yes this guy's very important <laughs> on a table but that's all up to your aesthetics uh, so most of my units are three stand units um, with six guys on a stand um, although uh, uh, mounting doesn't really matter um, you can build how however you want but both sides should about be about the same so for uh, facing and size compare because uh, whatever it depends if they're large, extra large, medium, tiny, or small. It's just the shooting and the combat is affected by that, not the size of the, what you have on the table. So um, we'll dive straight in um, for movement. Um, so you got your ar army. So I got my general, my four stance. So I want to, I want to move them. Um, there's different ways to move them. Um, you can move them individually, or you can move them in different groups in the same in the same division. Um, so the general will command these units. Uh, he can't control anyone else. There's there's a couple little caveats on that, but we're not get not into that yet. So the, so the officer wants to move these guys. The um, all you need he has a lead, um, they have leadership abilities with the leadership. It's a set number that you have to roll under for leaders to give commands. So majority of officers, you want to have them at eight. Nice number. So all you have to do is take your two dice. Roll. If you roll under an eight, you can give commands. Now, depending on how you roll is how many commands that they get. So uh, it's command, it's the command eight, if you... Roll at eight or one less, they get one one order. If it's two or less, it's two orders. And if it's three or less, they get three orders.
but also comes down to what orders that you gave them. Now, this is the important part. So before you roll, you tell your opponent what you're doing with your units. So uh, it, say uh, you, you, you want to just move your troops up to take a position. So I want to move up to this fence line. So you point out a fence line. You give command. So I rolled a 10. If I roll, you roll above an 8, you fail the leader, then the turn's done for that division. But so, uh, so I rolled a 6. 6 is too less, so they get two orders. So with the two orders, you can um, give them orders. They can move twice. Um, they can change formation and move once. If you That's what the order were. So his orders were just to move up to take offense. So what does he measure? The distance that infantry moves, infantry moves at um, on different numbers, depending on what they are. So, um, so depending on what they are, so most infantry move six inches. Uh, the, the movements are breaking down depending on what the unit is. Um, there's six, nine, or twelve inches, depending on what kind of troops they are. So basically, infantry can move six inches. Uh, most um, Heavy cavalry moves nine inches, and you got if you got light cavalry, um, they can move up to twelve inches. Now, we're just dealing with infantry right here, so you will issue a command, like I said before. Like, so they will move up to the fence. So you, if you get two less, you get two moves. So you can move twelve inches. Now, if you move up, the, the, and the fence is like eight inches away, you just move up behind the fence, and that's where you are. Because that's the order that you gave, is to move up to that fence. Now, if you gave a command, uh, if you roll good enough, say say you rolled three. So that gives you three actions with troops. If the movement would have moved you up and made contact with the enemy, you cannot charge them. Because that was not the order that you gave. So the order that you need to give is move up. If I can, I will charge the enemy. So you roll. If you make it, you can move up and charge the enemy. That's the only way you can go in the hand-to-hand -hand on an order roll. But you have to give the command to in charge the enemy. If you don't, they will not do it. Um, there's another order called initiative orders, which we'll get to. This This is just um, this for the movement. Um, same thing. Um, there's different formations, but the majority be line, which is this. And the other one will be a column. Basically, you're marching in line. This is like you're going down the road and stuff like that. This is column march. Um, this, you get bonuses on on your command when you roll because the guys are marching. Uh, if you're on roads and stuff and you stay on the roads, you get bonuses for that the move. And also, and if you're in column, if you fail your command roll, even if you fail, they still get a move. So if you want to move down the road, you rolled, and you failed your roll, they still get the move. Uh, it's just, uh, they're marching, they'll just keep marching. Uh, to change formation is an order. In So if I'm in column, get these out of the way. And I'll give the order. I want to change facing and move, and move up to a certain distance i roll my dice so i got a three so what i would do i would change my formation which is an action then i'll move and i get i get three actions but say if i only wanted to move a short distance like only one move up then i move up here that's all i just the other action is lost um, because you can't move more farther than what you ordered that you needed to do so this is things you got think about so like if you're in column <coughs> oh, I'm sorry Ooh, dry today and you got an infantry unit here like this far away they came out whatever they moved up here and being caught in column and hand to hand is bad it is you don't want to do that so you want to give the orders um, to chase formation then charge the enemy because this is hand-to-hand uh, -hand. this is bow so they can't shoot nothing so don't th don't worry about like transformation shooting but so you go I want to charge those guys 
So the, pet, the, the order that you give is important. So for this, you want the first order, you want to change formation first, then charge in. If you go, I'm going to charge in and change formation. Or you, you're not thinking, you roll. And if you roll good enough, the order was to move forward and change formation. But if you're in count, you can't charge the enemy in this formation because it's it's not bad. So it, you screwed up your orders because the, it, it, you gave them out of command. You want to make sure you change formation before you charge in. Um, so the order would be like change formation. If you're real good enough, you get two, and you can charge if you get two actions. Now, if you already got one action, the first action was change. You'll change formation, and that's where you stand, like that. So, the the order of the order must be important. How when you issue them. Now for movement, say you got these two units here. They're in the same division. You want you want them to move. Um, your generals here. Now the distance your generals away from the unit is important, and the distance between the units in the division are important. So farther away the leader is from a unit, harder it is the commands. So minus one to the leadership. Every six inches they're away. So you want to keep your generals close, but that is linked through the command structure. So. If you have a, a unit like off in the distance, off, off, there we go. Farther than six inches away, like the leaders here. These, as long as these guys are in six inches, they're still they're still in command because the order can be issued down the line. Based, if you think about it that way. So the two ways to give orders is to get individual units orders, or you can get a division order. If you do a division order, um, individual order is just. Say I want this unit to charge. You roll your dice. I roll the seven. The leadership is eight, so they get one move. So they can move ahead six inches. Boom. They can move ahead, and that's where they will end. Then you move on to the next unit. Or you can give a division order, which is you're issuing your whole division an, an order. Oops. Move this out a little bit. See, here we go. So you get your commander here with his, his division. So you want to give a command to let me move these over here. So I give these command the move. So what you do is make sure they're going the right way. That's very important. <laughs> so so you say, well, I want these guys to move forward. As long as, as they move. They stay within six inches of each other. They could move that formation. So, so you want, like, say, you want this unit to charge an enemy, and this unit to come up to support, and not your bow. You don't want your bow in hand to hand, but these two. So you just do a normal roll. I rolled an eight, so they get one move. So both these units can move forward. They're six inches, and as long as they stay within six inches, they can they can do that move. So like these guys, you can move forward if you want to, and these guys you can. Move the cover of the flank like that. As long as they stay with six inches, you can do that. Now, in this game, when you do movement like wheeling, there's no such thing as wheeling. As you just move, you just got to make sure the farthest guy that has to move doesn't move over six inches. So, like this guy, if you want to go wheel to the side here, like this, as long as this guy doesn't go over six inches, you can do that. Or if you mind going like this diagonal stuff like that. So, so that's that's the only important thing is, is you don't have, you don't have to calculate the wheel and pivot. This as long as this guy does not go over six inches, so like six inch, go like here, then the, the rest of the unit just falls right and right back. So usually sometimes it's easier to measure from the last guy instead of the front guy, especially if you're doing some maneuvering or anything like that. So. So that makes it easy that you know when that this guy moves six inches, everybody else can go right, right next to him. Uh, it's half movement that goes sideways. Um, there's certain things um, that you can't do. Oh, let me go back to one step before movement. It's what's called initiative moves. Initiative move is... Yeah. 
In front, if you're within six inches of an enemy, so it's like beginning of the turn. If you have a unit within six inches, like that, so like these two units, this this unit's going to go. It's within six. This unit can, on its own, on initiative, charge in. It represents the local commander taking command and just ordering his guys just to go in. He's not waiting for his, his general to give him orders. He's doing it himself. So it's called initiative move. Um, or you can move straight back. So like the archers, like if they're in them like this, they can go move back and try to get some distance between them. But it's only one move, and that's it. Um, you can give them orders, but if they're within six inches, they get minuses in their leadership. For um, or issuing orders because they're um, focused on them, and also there's what's called a proximity rule. So if a unit like this, these bowmen have a proximity, uh, it's a 12 inch box that comes out for the front of them. It's called a proximity rule. If any units moves within that box, it must keep their facing toward the nearest unit, the closest unit. So like these archers are here, so this unit. See, he's like this. He could not march across the front of this. They would not do that. So if you want to move this unit, either you could turn turn them this way. They have to face the closest. So if this unit's going to turn like this. If that unit comes within the proximity of their archer unit, their facing would have to be like this. They would have to face the closest unit if they're within the proximity of that unit. They would not... Turn their backs on them unless they're fleeing, which is a whole, whole other thing. And they would not march just my, across the, the flank. They would not do that. So, so once the units get in close, this is where it, the units get start to lock down. So like this unit's here, and if you want to move them, they could not turn and move. Because they have to keep faith. You can move sideways half a move. Is this basically just shuffling side? But they have to keep keep their facing toward the enemy. They would not, or you can always move them back. If you move back outside the twelve, then you can turn and move whatever direction you want to go. But it's just a it's just a thing that once you're that close, you will not take your facing off the enemy. Because if you if you go like this, you go okay. I'm going to turn, move, and turn. That's three moves. And you roll, you only get one move. The unit goes like this, and basically they're dead. <laughs> but they, so that unit would not, the units would not do that. They would keep their facing. So once you're getting close, they, they'll start getting locked down. But that's only if they're within the visual range. So there's like a 45 degree arc that comes off the facing of these guys. So if I, if they're like this, both those units are locked that way. So this guy could move, but he would have to move. To face that unit because he's within the zone. So he, but he, if you want, if you, um, so even doing this, you could because you still have to keep the proximity. So it, it starts, it, this is where the unwieldy control of linear combat starts getting in. But if you, so if you move back outside of 12, then this unit could turn and march. Whatever it wants, as long as it's outside the 12. And also, you got two units like this. And they visually cannot see if, so like, these, these men at arms is outside the 12 inches. Of the, I mean, outside the 40 visual. Then these guys can move how they want to because they're outside the visual. They basically can't see each other. So they're not, so this unit can come up and turn and go in. If it wanted to, so there, there, there's some ramifications. I'm getting once you get close, units are start being sucked into the combat. So stuff you got to look out for. Um, but that's basically initiative moves. It's just a free move. You can charge in, or you can do one move back. Just uh, but that's their order for the turn. So if you do that, they're done. That unit's done. It's just a. Uh, the local commander trying to get them out of trouble or get them into trouble. So, uh, 
and it's not rolling nothing. It's automatically done. And it said, uh, if you, if you uh, do a division move, long as the unit statement is six inches, you can form up into line and stuff like that. So now this is something I I didn't see before. I don't know if it's I couldn't find. You no, know, if so, if, if opponent goes, okay, I'm going to take this unit. And I, I'm going to move that unit. You, and he, he rolls, and if he makes it, now this is something. Since he, since, since the general of that unit did not give any orders what he wanted to do, so I'm just going to move. Or he just takes, he rolls, and okay, I'm moving this unit. Even if you roll good enough, something happened. Since he did not tell him what the orders were going to be. So if he wanted these guys to charge, but he didn't, uh, didn't say it, and he rolls and just moves it. Your opponent go, goes, oh, wait, 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 wait. You did not give him orders. So what happens, it depends on how picky you want. It can be gentleman's agreement. Oh, this is what I wanted to do. Okay, no, it could be for friends. But if you really want to do it, if he did that and he rolled, if he rolled before he caught himself or whatever, and he made it, even if you make it or not, it becomes a blunder. You want him to do something, but he didn't give him an order to do it. He rolled, becomes a blunder. Then there's the blunder table, and things can happen. So either you get a blunder by rolling box cards, which is double sixes. Well, and these are floor de lees. So if you roll two floor de lees, two sixes, you go to the blunder table. Now, the blunder table can do different things. There's six different things. You, uh, if you're, you, then you roll the dice, and you got a two. Two is back. The unit must must move backwards one move to its rear corner while continuing to face the same direction. So what that means is, let's see right here, the rear corner is at 45, just like the visual of the front. This unit has to move one movement back, but it still has to face frontward. So he could move back like this or move straight back six inches. So, so if there's another unit here, which are six inches away. So he moves back and six inches went ended up here. Since you cannot land on a unit, you would just move back a step further. So if you got like multiple units, this unit just keep moving back into a dense. So uh, that's for two. One is uncontrolled flight. The unit turns around to face the rear and makes two full moves to the facing quarter. The unit will move even farther if necessary to clear position of friendlies. And once it has moved, the unit suffers one casualty to represent the loss of life and equipment. So it even takes a casualty, which we haven't gotten to because that's the fight. Three is drift left. The unit makes one move to its left quarter. Now, the left quarter is, this is what um, um, exceeds the, the proximity rule. This is, for some reason, the troops move. So you have a 45 so I say, okay, you got one move. So you can actually move them within that quarter this way. So even uh, for some reason, usually you can't do that because of the proximity. But this is, in the move, they just drift that way. It's just, oops, I screwed up. Four is drift right, the same thing. Five is forward. The unit makes one move to its front and will charge as facing the enemy within the movement distance. So it's one movement forward. If there's an enemy, they'll charge in no matter who they are. So you got archers. I said, okay, um, I'm going to, I want to move the, I want to move them. So, and um, they're not within six inches. So the initiative move. So I want, I want to move them back a little bit. Keep, try to keep the distance between the men at arms. I want, so I can shoot them in the shooting phase. I roll. And I, and I screw up, I roll a five, they will move six inches forward. <laughs> For some reason, the order of fall back became a move forward. And if they were in six inches, normally it would be an initiative move, but say if you want to move them farther back. So if you want to move these guys as far back as, as you can and you screw up, these guys will just charge straight in. <laughs> and it becomes a bad day. And six is uncontrolled advance. The unit makes three moves to its front. So you roll, you get box cars, you roll six again. Um, they will charge forward. Three moves. Now, different 
thing. You, so if you got yeah, chillery and you and you, and you wanted to move them up forward and you get uncontrolled charge, the guys will just run forward and leave the gun. This is, it doesn't explain it in the rules, but this is house rules. Is the guys would drop everything and just run forward for some reason. They got excited. Even if that runs them into a hand to hand, then, then I, I just consider them to destroy. The four guys run forward and they all get hacked down. I said, oh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> so, makes sense to blunder table. If you're all blunders, things can't. And if you fall off the table, if you like, if, if you were fleeing off the table, if a blunder moves you, makes you move off the table, you get a chance to roll to move back onto the table, just in order. So you roll, if you make it at least once, you move on six inches. And that's the whole movement for the turn. You just move on six inches, then that's that ends your turn for that unit. But that's the way if you but if you fleed off the table with uh losing combat or something, you can't come back. But any of the blunders, if you move off the table, you have a chance to bring them back. Um, now, I was talking about uh, free moves. Uh, if you're in column, you get a free move. Baggage, carriage, wagons get free move. Uh, tiny units like scouts and stuff, they get a free move. And scouts is just individual mounted figures that you can move out through scouting trains. They can move through terrain and stuff. If some units have special rules allow them to do that, so that's going to come down to the unit and stuff. Um, so if you got, uh, I think certain um, units can, um, oh, and broken divisions. Um, this would come in morale, but if we got a broken division, which will get to it, they, they will automatically move <laughs> off the table. Uh, but that's that's it on movement. It's just important thing is give orders before you roll. Don't roll and give orders. Then um, or um, divisions gotta stay within six inches of each other. So if you got a mixed division, a horse in infantry, it becomes really bad because the horse are are stuck with that unit. So you don't this period you don't want to have horse and infantry together unless the horse have a special. Uh, uh, allows them to be away from the unit, which are there are rules that you can give, like light cavalry, which they can roam about without being within the command range. But usually, horses have their own divisions, and infantry have their own division. And artillery is sprinkled in with the infantry, or you can have an artillery part of their own guns under a command. So, um, you can get individual units, or you can get divisional units orders. And if you get division order, they must remain within six inches. And so they don't all have to remain six inches of each other. It's just as long as one is within six inches of another unit, then they're all in command. As long as one unit was is in six inches of the command. So if you got me three units, like this, and say I want I want to move forward and form line. So as long as these units stay within six inches. They can move forward into line. They can have a general right there. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. And that's 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 a legal move. It's just each unit in the division has to be within six inches of another unit, and the general has to be within six inches of a unit within six inches of another one. Um, basically, that's the. That's the movement. Um, the proximity rule, uh, yeah, the proximity rule is um, really have to go through it. Um, the stuff like skirmishers, they're pro if they're if if you have a unit of skirmishers, which I don't really run much, much skirmishers because I don't have that. But if you run, run like a Roman army, you got some vilats, your, your skirmish light troops, they run differently. They're pro the proximity. So if you got a unit of skirmishers out here, like running around, the proximity rule for them from a unit is only six inches, not twelve. So as long as they stay outside six inches, they can move and do whatever they want. But if they come within six inches, then they have to face the closest unit. So but if they're outside six inches, they're they can move around a little bit better than a formed unit.
And that's, uh, oh, manhandling artillery. Artillery uh, is different than modern day. So you you place your artillery, that's where they, now they can move, you can be manhandled up to six inches. But when artillery, if the artillery moves, they can't fire that turn. They have to wait a turn, then they can fire. Uh, oh, moving through units. Friendly units can move through each other. Um, but there's certain things. Um, so you got uh, two friendly units. And if you want this unit to move through this unit, well, how it happens is take the center of the unit. Usually that's the command or a flag or whatever. And as you that unit is moving through the unit in front, as long as the flag does not cross that unit, you can move through with no problem. So, you know, it's like this. The flag's here. It moves forward. It can move forward, no penalty. Now, if the, if the unit was right behind and, and said, I want to move this unit forward this, you still can do it, but you disorder each other because you got so many guys intermingling. Now, the special rules allow you to do that, that you don't have to do it. If these units have that, you got no problem. But most units, if you go across more, how they do it is if the flags, center guy of each, crosses each other, then it's intermingling and bad things happen. Uh, they become disorder. You got a chance to disorder each other, so you drop a die. Four, five, or six. If you roll, so this, uh, I rolled a three. So one, two, or three, the unit's disordered. So that unit becomes disordered, and this unit... Stays okay. So the unit you want to move forward to help this unit becomes disorder, and he get they get penalties in combat. So and shooting and so, but that's the easy way to remember is like if more than half the unit crosses each other, then you have a, cha a chance of disordering each other. They don't have to; it just they dis a chance. If not, you can move through with no penalties. Um, formation changes. It's not. It's just an action. The formation change. Um, a lot of times, most of my games, there's only two formations, is march column and line. Um, certain armies at different periods of time will have different, um, you might have units that can form skirmish, so you can, uh, an action, they can form a skirmish line. Um, you got Romans, they can form the testateral, which is basically an armored big turtle, with their shield stuff, that's an, so, but most of my units... You just have line and column. <laughs> uh, so also uh, movement, you got cavalry. Cavalry is basically the same thing, um, uh, but their movement is nine inches, uh, and light cavalry is twelve. Uh, they got they say movement. They got line or column. That's um, you can have special rules like feign flight, which allows the unit to retreat after movement after a. Um, shooting and stuff so there's a lot of little rules you can add to it which will come over in its own chapter so oh and the last thing is moving commanders after your army are after you move your division in place then you can place your commanders when you want to so if you have a unit that's hurt so like this unit has two hits on it he can come up and as long as that unit was was not issued any orders during the movement turn you got a chance to heal it. So you roll, roll. If you roll um, the command rating, you can remove one casualty. But once you receive a casualty, you always keep it for us the game. So if he has two, if I make my command roll, it goes down to one. Basically, he got got raised the morale. <coughs> the game's not based on casualty; it's based on breaking the morale of the enemy forces. Um, there's a couple other um, commands. Um, you got. Um, you can also just move up and join the unit in combat. Uh, what happens in combat? Once we get in the combat, combat um, chapter, go over, but he can come up, he can join, and his, com his attacks can add to. But <coughs> he has a chance of dying, which we'll come to later. Uh, he can join the unit and follow me, boys, and the whole unit can move. It's just a one roll, and you can go three moves, ranging across the table. All right.
it's 12 inches for general. I don't know why I was saying six inches, 12 inches. So it's just this command radius. Um, so I don't want to say six inches, huh. but so, so orders you can uh, join a unit and his attacks can add a unit. He can um, rally a unit, which is burn off a um, wound. He can do a he can do a general advance. This is usually left for the army general. So, so you say you got three divisions, three separate units, and you got Richard the Third here. That's his army. What he could do as a special role, he can cause it's called a general advance. You roll, and if he makes it, uh, uh, this command range is usually a nine for the next higher up. If rolled eight, he makes it. That means your whole army. No matter what you do, we'll get one move forward. So this is one way, if you want your whole army to move forward, lurch forward, you can do it. Uh, it does it negates all other movement, but it it just allows the whole army to just solidly move forward instead of piecemeal, especially on rolling and stuff like that. So it's just a um, fast way to, in your turn to get everyone to move. So... Uh, and what, another order they can get with is called Warrior Courage. So, so this is his division. Say, so if you got another unit back here from a different division who's running away, what that general could do, he can come over here, join that unit, and do a command roll. If he makes it, that unit becomes part of his unit. <laughs> He's rallying that unit and getting him back in the line, but it falls under his command. But that unit is running. And he fails, he starts moving with that unit. So if that unit he does that, the next turn, if he doesn't rally, this has a chance of this him being swept off the field with this unit. So it's one way to save a unit from leaving, but you have a chance of losing your commander too. So it's a toss-up. So that's the basic rules. Um there might be some stuff that'll come up that it's not covered in the rules. And I said, that's where you just work down with a gentleman's agreement and it'll work out that way. So it's not complicated. There's a lot in it, but there is not because it's only one role to get things going. It's not multiple charts and roles. Some of you, so next up we'll be, uh, we'll do, we'll go through the combat. We'll be shooting. Then there's um, hand to hand. Then we get the important phase, the morale phase. That's what makes or break your army. So um, I hope this was it clearly presented to you. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask. But um, in the I said in the New Hail Caesar, they really go through section by section how it does. They really clear out a lot of um, issues in the rules and stuff. So it's. If it's not in that paragraph, you can't find it anywhere else, which is, as I said, they have a nice table of contents now. So you can actually look, at, or in the back where they have a bullet point view of each step. If it's not there, then you can work out a general agreement on what what to do. Um, oh, the, moving over terrain. Um, if a uh, unit goes over, um, like, uh, wall and stuff, it's minus three inches, so basically it's half your move to get over terrain. Um, difficult terrain is half move. Um, like, um, other units, it's hard for depending on what it comes down to period and horse and stuff like horses can't charge through heavy woods and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so train is not, it's, it's basically straightforward. Um, it just comes down what rules you get to it. So if you got a river, they just say it's affordable or unfordable. If it's unfordable, nothing can move through it. It's affordable. Um, it's half movement. Um, you can go like infantry and cavalry can cross uh, rivers, uh, this river, but artillery can't. They have to go through a ford or across a bridge. So it just comes down to the base scenario of the game. Going up and down hills, I, I usually they're gentle hills. So there's no problem there. If you got like an escape escarpment or a south, if you need move over, then you can work out half move to move, climb up the ridge or something like that. Um, also, trees black line of sight, which will come in for shooting and stuff like that. Um, once once we come to that, so that's.
basically the it for the movement. Uh, not much to it, but as I say it, they give a really detailed explanation of everything. So, uh, oh, movement for commanders is always 24. On foot and a horse, they always move 24. And to extent, they can't be shot um, and they can't be captured unless they're with a the unit. They're just there to represent an area of where the leadership is. So, so once, once we become the combat archery, we'll come to them. So until later, guys, um, have a good day and enjoy the game. That's all that matters. Uh, no matter how easy the rules are or how difficult or complex the rules are, if you have fun, enjoy it. All right? Have a good day.